Greetings, and bienvenue, mine crew. Thank you for returning to this broadcast. And welcome to new viewers joining us for the first time. If you like a video, then feel free to subscribe. This is about a childhood experience which for the past 25 plus years, I had thought was just a dream. But now, for reasons I'll explain, suspect it probably wasn't. It's been bothering me, so I just want to get it out there and hear other people's thoughts on it, be them rational or irrational. Here goes. My friend and I had just taken the bus home from school. The nearest stop was still a few blocks from our street, and it was cold as hell and pissing down rain. So rather than walk the rest of the way, we instead went to the train depot, which was much closer, on account of my uncle worked there, and I figured he could duck out and drive us home real quick. When we got there, we were stopped by what I assume was a security guard. He was in civilian clothes and carrying a rifle. He wasn't a dick about it or anything. He just wanted to know who we were and why we there. And when we told him, he let us in. We were dumbass kids, so we immediately got lost. We weren't scared or anything yet because although the place was big and confusing, it was somewhat familiar in our neighborhood and a lot of family friends and familiar faces worked there. So we quite happily just wandered into a random building of some kind to ask someone for help. Inside, there were more guys standing around with guns, though they didn't see us because they were all focused on what was happening in the middle of the room. It was some kind of large warehouse or workshop area, and there was a crane attached to a rail on the ceiling. Suspended from the crane was a large metal cage containing something I couldn't see. I don't know if the bars were too narrowly spaced or if it was too dark or what. I simply can't conjure up a clear memory of what it looked like besides being a cage. Whatever was in there wasn't happy about it, because it was screeching like a banshee and bashing on the sides hard enough to jostle it around. At this point, I remember being pretty scared, but my friend and I hung around to watch regardless. The cage was lowered into a shipping container through an open hatch in the top, and then a guy standing on top of the container pushed the hatch shut, and the screeching immediately ceased like it was perfectly soundproof. The container itself was dark gray, with a big logo painted on the side that looked like red and yellow interlaced chevrons, after that, somebody noticed us and ushered us out, then pointed us in the right direction to find my uncle. I don't remember anything after that, so I don't know if we asked my uncle about it on the way home. For most of my life, I've been convinced that it was all a dream and didn't really think about it until recently when I came back to my hometown to house sit for my parents and look after their dog while they were overseas. A couple of nights ago, I went on a 2 a.m. coffee run and got stuck at a railway crossing waiting for a train to pass. I was staring off into nothing on complete autopilot until lo and behold, I see a dark gray shipping container with red and yellow interlaced chevrons painted on the side. It shot past quickly but I saw it clear as day in my headlights, and that's when the dream came flooding back. The following afternoon I caught up with my friend when he got off work and asked him about it, but only got as far as the part with the plainclothes security guard before his eyes widened and he said something to the effect of, holy shit I thought that was a dream. I let him finish the story from there as to not taint his version of events with my own, and he remembered it essentially the same way I did. This event transpired in rural South Australia during what I'm reasonably sure was the winter of 1994, June to August for the Southern Hemisphere. I'm able to narrow down the date to that because one of the reasons I convinced myself it was a dream was a vague similarity to a scene from Jurassic Park, which was released here in the winter of 1993 but I didn't see it in cinemas, and it wasn't winter anymore by the time it came to VHS, so it had to have been the following year in order for me to make that association and have it fresh in my mind at the time, and it was definitely winter because it was cold. Anyway, that's my spooky childhood encounter with something I can't explain. I really want to know if anybody has ever seen similar shipping containers or what might be inside them. Or just post your own experiences even if they're completely unrelated. If any of you have a mundane explanation, feel free to lay it on me alongside a barrage of insults. Honestly, I'd be relieved just to find out I'm not a few blocks away from something that might make me the first nameless victim in a Monster of the Week episode. That's it. Cheers for reading. When I was a little kid, I don't remember the age specifically. I was lying in bed about to go to sleep, but I still had the lights on, maybe waiting for my mother to turn them off. Anyway, I looked down to the foot of my bed, and saw this evil-looking cat looking at me, like it was standing up and looking over the foot of the bed and staring at me. It's hard to describe since it's been a long time, but I remember it was black and white, 
and it didn't look normal at all, and it scared the hell out of me. So I hid my head under the covers until my mother showed up. We owned a cat at the time, but it definitely was not that cat. I was completely sure of it then. For a long time I was scared of looking down to the foot of my bed because I thought that something would be there. Eventually I rationalized this as a dream, but when I was a teenager I was having a conversation with my mother and she was talking about the cats she'd owned in the past. There was one that was black and white, that had died several years before I was born, and that it had died in my room. Kind of reminds me of dreams I used to have. My brother and his girlfriend died in his room at my mom's house when I was a teen. I didn't live with her at the time, but moved in after. She had two spare bedrooms, one being my brother's old room. No one wanted to sleep there, but I didn't mind. So I took it as my own room so the other could be a guest room. I had a bunch of weird sleep paralysis and dreams there. I never had sleep paralysis before that room, and only once or twice since. I clearly remember a man standing at the foot of my bed during one sleep paralysis. I would also frequently wake up screaming, but not remembering what my dream was. I only did that in that room. The weird thing is when I woke up I had no problems. I didn't feel any fear or anxiety over that being the room they died in. They died right in the closet doorway, at the foot of my bed, and I always left the closet door open as I slept. With all of the lights off, people always thought that was creepy but it didn't bother me. There were more paranormal things that happened there too. The poster you responded to here. My grandfather lived with us and he always slept with a nightlight. I didn't think too much of it since he had always done it. Eventually my mother, his daughter, told me that she had a sister who died in infancy and that my grandfather had once seen a little girl standing at the foot of his bed, staring at him, and it scared him so much he slept with a nightlight for the rest of his life. When I was a kid, around nine or ten, I had two separate experiences with this weird being. I've never had any visual hallucinations, and this is by far the strangest thing that's happened to me. The first was in my bedroom before I went to bed. I shut the light off and noticed it perched on my windowsill. It looked like a monkey wolf hybrid with bat wings. It was pitch black and had red glowing eyes. The closest I can find is a cryptid known as an Ahul, but it had more of an ethereal, non-physical vibe to it. However, it definitely felt dangerous. I specifically remember a loud ringing in my ears when I focused my eyes on it. It didn't do anything malicious, it just looked. It flew away a few moments later. My second experience was somewhere between half a year to a year later. While driving home from Walmart at night, we were stopped at a stoplight. Once again, a window is involved. I look out the car window, and the same creature is staring at me a few feet away from the car. Again, my ears rang when I looked at it. Nobody else saw it, and we drove away. Ever since then, even talking about the thing and remembering its face gives me an extremely off-putting, icky feeling. Typing this out feels like I'm almost marking myself as a target again. If anyone knows what this is or what it could have meant, please leave some speculation. Pic is of an a-hole from Google Images. Not accurate, but gets the point across. Does 12 years old count as childhood? My aunt saw a Facebook listing for fake blood. It was near Halloween and she wanted to do zombie makeup, and it was from a guy who lived in a kind of remote area, backwoods type cabin country. But if need be, you could reach a neighbor within 10 minutes just by running. Anywho, my aunt isn't stupid and wasn't going to bring her and her children alone to some old man who lives in the middle of nowhere, so she brought my dad, who in turn brought me. I slept through most of the ride, I think, but when we got there it was just off of a lake with a couple other cabins in view just down a gravel road. But the guy's house was deeper into the woods than the others, and you had to go a little further in through his own gravel path to even see his house. So we turned the corner to where it should be, and the first thing my dad notices is that there's a lineup of cars of every shape and kind. They don't look decrepit, they just seem like they were left there. I didn't pay it any attention because I was an idiot and 12 and was probably staring at my DS or some shit. What caught my eye was his rickety ass house. It essentially looked like what you'd imagine a hillbilly would construct on his own. It was purple and shackish, and had two floors which peaked like a barn does. The top floor was a bit more inward, creating a sort of rooftop ledge around it, and there was a wooden panel door with a rainbow peace sign spray painted on. 
The old bastard that owned the place came out in cleanly dressed. He was bald and thin, kinda short. He wore yellow rubber boots despite it not being the weather nor the environment for it, and he had khakis on with a dress shirt tucked into it. So my dad makes idle chit-chat and my aunt is just kind of standing there, despite being the one who had business with him. He invites us inside his shack and of course to be polite we follow him. It was kind of musty. We entered through some sort of laundry living room hybrid. I remember there was stained carpet, and in the corner of an outcrop was an industrial sized washing machine and there was a smell of rot in the air I didn't take notice of till we went up three steps into his kitchen. The thing that strikes me most about his kitchen was that it seemed out of place, like someone had cut out a restaurant's appliances and stuck them in there. It was all stainless steel, like sheet metal, with pans hanging from a vent thing on top of a prep table. In the corner of the room by the wall was a massive stack of plastic bins, with nothing noteworthy in them, just that there were so many it went over my head. On top of one of them was like four kittens who vomited and shat while the old guy beckoned us further into his shitty house. It was like he was baiting us or some shit, can't make it up, he went, it's just back here, it's just back here. There was also random chemical bottles strewn about the floor that's covered in cat vomit at this point. The most noteworthy thing was the bleach next to the massive all-metal fridge. Why the hell did he have a bottle of bleach just kicking around his kitchen? Anyway, that coot wants us to follow him into the next room which is covered wall to wall in plastic bins full of random bullshit floor to roof. But there was a clearing made for a, what I think was a green screen. It was just a green sheet pinned from the roof that draped down around the floor and in front of it was a camera on a tripod. This is when the alarms go off in my aunt's head and she pretends my baby cousin, who she's holding, just spit up, even though it was obvious she didn't, and that she had to go back to the car to clean it up. Me, being an asshole and 12 years old, left my dad behind to fend for himself in that nutcase's house of lunacy. We wait like 10 minutes, and dad comes back out, almost amused at the bizarre place he'd been walking through, with the makeup paint, and we got the hell out of there. Fun story we like to share around my aunt pick-related, the general house design for memory. When I was about 11 or 12, my friend and I were hanging out alone at my house one afternoon. We were bored, so we decided to go goof around in the garage where there was a large bin of outdoor toys. The garage door was closed at the time. He picked out a skateboard and started riding around in a circle while I picked out a water gun with just a little water left in it. It was a super soaker style water gun, so it had a pump on the front. As I pumped, the last little bit of water left in the tank started sputtering out as a mist with a psh, white noise kind of sound. In the midst of that sound, I heard, clear as anything I've ever heard in my life, a woman's voice hissing my name into my right ear. I was stunned, so I stopped cold while my brain tried to process the situation. I then noticed my friend had stopped on the skateboard and was looking at me wide-eyed, so I knew he had heard it too. Long story short, we ran the hell back into the house and didn't go back into the garage for a while. Not the craziest story, but I still have no idea how to explain it and it wasn't an obvious false memory like some other childhood stories people have, especially since my friend corroborates it to this day. Reminds me of this story last year, maybe he's still doing this, where he found a deaf aid app that filters sound and enhances certain frequencies for human speech, where he found that if he asked questions near running water, monitoring the audio with headphones, then he would get clear definitive answers from the water noise. A theory explaining this I have found before is that ghosts seem to have to use things already existing in this dimension as a sort of medium for their message. Also that they can manipulate such things, so perhaps the friend doing circles on his wheelie board was creating a hypnotic sound like Danny in The Shining. This set the mental scene. Then the squeak of the super soaker spraying mist happened to be the similar frequencies of women's human whisper, and your granny ghost or dead twin or whatever was like sweet now's my chance anon into your right ear. Could also be a deceased pet, 
I think my cat is still with me and experiencing unexplainable things. Like I leave my bedroom and lay down on the living room couch. No one is in my room or near it. They'd have to pass me to get there. But I'll hear the door open. And then the living room door. It's like she comes to hang out if I don't return to my room. Also things have gone missing and then appeared right where they should have been before. Also I kind of see her. I suspect if I could see ultraviolet like cats can then I'd see her spirit body. It is like I can see it but not see it. So I think it's ultraviolet. I showed my other cat my room and he took off scared shitless. After peering in there it's like he saw something. Before, sometimes stand up in the middle of the night, staring into the darkness until something freaks me out. Run out of room to call for dad and tell him I saw a ghost. This happens a bunch of times. Dad is getting more and more pissed by the minute. B8. Dad is cooking a meal in the kitchen. Shit flies off of the shelf. This keeps happening until I'm an adult. He eventually gets so pissed off by the constant things falling off, he curses at a witch. Bags in my room take the form of faces looking at me whilst I'm in bed. B16. Browse the interwebs on the phone. Light on the wall. Dafuk. Approach it. It looks like an old-styled movie being played from a projector. Can't figure out where it's coming from. The shadow hand covers the movie. Shitbricks.jpg. Run to the bathroom and hide. B18. Living on my own in a new apartment now. I have nightmares about my father's old place. Just the damned hallway leading to my room. He sold it and moved to Thailand. Think nothing of it in the morning. B19. Another nightmare, this time in my own apartment. See shadowy hands cover the entire wall of my apartment, unable to breathe. Wake up, gasping for air. Be me today. 21. Constant knocking sounds coming from the walls. Have new neighbors constantly and the knocking still happens. It's not from them. I'm also not a loud tenant, so it's odd they keep moving out. Still have nightmares of the hallway. I don't ever feel safe in my own apartment. Constant depressive episodes. Every room is vibrating with a negative emotional aura. Am I genuinely haunted or am I just going insane? Even though I usually spend my time lurking on other boards, I randomly decided to look at X and this thread actually reminded me of a story that happened to me when I was a child, so I'll share. When I was about seven or eight, I used to share a room with my brother. We had bunk beds. He was on the bottom bunk and I was on the top. One night I had a dream I was being chased through my old house I used to live in. I moved right before my fifth birthday. Anyway, I was in my old house and I was being chased by something. I'm not sure what it was but I remember it was me and possibly my brothers and a lady wearing a rose dress running and hiding from something in the old house. In my dream, I never saw the woman's face but I remember trying to hide from whatever it was that was in the house chasing us. When I woke up from the dream, I looked over at my dresser and I noticed there was a black silhouette in the shape of a person outlining the front of it. I stared at it for what I'm guessing was a few seconds, and from the neck down the silhouette lit up. It was a lady, wearing a rose dress, and she was pointing at me. I remember she had red painted nails, and the dress was kind of a maroon burgundy flowery pattern. Again, only from the neck down the silhouette lit up. The face and hair remained dark and I never saw it. Needless to say, I freaked out, so I turned over facing the wall, pulled the covers over my head, and closed my eyes until I fell asleep. The next morning, I went into my mother's room and asked her if she had been in my room in the middle of the night. She said no, and I told her the story. I guess she believed me and thought it was strange, but I didn't think anything more of it until years later. Now a little backstory into my mother's life. Her mother died when she was 13, almost 14 years old, from a stroke. I obviously had never met her, but I heard many stories about her growing up. Fast forward from when I was 7 or 8 to when I was about 14 or 15. I was on vacation staying with my mother and her best friend and my story about the woman I saw was brought up. I told the story to my mother's best friend and she as well thought it was strange and my mum sat there quietly thinking for a minute and said, you know something Anon? Now that I remember it, your grandmother was buried in a rose dress. I asked several times if she was bullshitting me and she assured me she was being honest. I will admit that the whole situation could be simply chalked up to me waking up still slightly dreaming because in my dream, I never saw the woman's face and maybe my brain could not make one out when I woke up. However, if it was my grandmother, 
That's a pretty damn dirty trick to play on a seven-year-old. If you read all this, thanks for listening. I've never shared that story online before. This reminds me of a similar story I read on here a few months back. Guy saw his dead grandpa sitting in his old chair while house-sitting for his grandma one night. Very eerie anon. If you didn't know she was buried in that dress is makes it hard to rationalize. I'm very glad you made this thread anon. Give me a chance to tell this story that has weirded me out. Be like six or seven. Out the back with mother while she hangs clothes to dry. Look out the window and see a two foot long cockroach as if you were in Photoshop and just grabbed the corner of a PNG of a cockroach and enlarged it. I remember there being another large bug that was different, but I can't remember what type. My mother didn't react at all, just kept hanging clothes. Don't even recall being scared or anything, just a big old bug. Funnily enough, one of my friends told me a story from his childhood about a giant bug also. Another weird one, probably a little younger than last story. The house is still being finished, but we are still living in it. Kicked my big toe into a nail hanging out of a skirting board. Look at the wound. Can't recall any blood, just a hole where I kicked it with my toe. As if I just went free cam IRL, my vision gets sucked into the wound. Like my eyes shrunk and got sucked into the hole in my toe. Recall wispy, web-type visions while inside my wound. The closest thing I can relate it to is Jimmy Neutron Brain Blast. When I was very young, probably six or seven, I want to say, I was outside and remember seeing two giant, for bug standards, probably like two feet long, bugs. The one I can remember was a cockroach, and the other I can't remember, but I know there were two. I remember my mother not even reacting to it. She just kept hanging the clothes on the line. Funny thing, I remember my friend telling me he remembered a giant bug from his childhood as well. This comment surfaced a memory for me that I haven't thought about in over a decade. Be six or seven years old, on a hike in the woods with my family, see a large banana slug on a tree near the trail. I was very obsessed with bugs as a kid. See a circular hole in the side of the slug's head expanding and contracting. Decide to look inside, free cam like described, as if my vision is inside the slug itself. See circular brain sitting on a floor of sorts inside slug's head, creeped out immensely. Don't tell anyone about it, lose a little bit of sleep, then forget about it. Randomly remember at a later point and get very weirded out. As far as I know, no animals have a brain exposed to the elements like that. Decide to look up slug anatomy doesn't line up with what I remember. How was I even able to see the brain with no light source within the slug in a poorly lit forest? Still weirded out to this day. The pulsating hole in the slug's head was just its pneumostome or respiratory opening. Slugs do have a circular ganglion and an open circulatory system where the brain does sort of just rest on the floor in the head. I'll try to keep this brief. I was probably 10 or 11 at the time. It happened up on the tribal hill in Siletz, Oregon, in an area with duplexes and looked fairly suburban besides there being trees and forestry in most of that area. Riding in an SUV with my parents and sibs, while my dad was going to pick up something from his friend's house. We all waited in the vehicle while he went in. I was in the back on the passenger side looking out the window, just bored and looking around. Then, after around five to seven minutes, there was a guy on a bike with long black braided hair, prescription glasses, light tan leather pants and jacket, and a loaded backpack. Watch him riding in our direction toward the sidewalk. I looked down at the curb wondering when he'd just slow down because that would be painful and probably fuck up his bike if not etc. He makes it over that just fine. No bumping. Same speed. Weird but okay. Still traveling in a straight line he then goes to the fence past the sidewalk and some grass behind the houses and duplexes lined up. Figure he'll crash for sure. He goes through the fence as if it wasn't there unscathed. I saw him riding like nothing happened then. Vanished. 
About a year ago I asked my former stepmother about it because she was there and saw it when it happened. I gave specific details to give her a better frame of reference for that point in time, and she just gave half-assed answers then changed the topic. I'm skeptical of ghosts and have more doubts, but if it's not ghost-related, how else can it be explained? At some point I tried doing research on that area of Oregon, on if paranormal strange activity happens there, and found little to nothing. I'd like to think it was just an act of imagination as a child at the time, but I remember it so clearly. Posting two, I guess. One more intense than the other. Around like six or seven or something. Around like eight or nine p.m. playing shitty early 2000s flash games on my parents' computer in our office room. Summer in the Pacific Northwest, so the window is open for nice, cool, moist air. Computer starts running slow and I start getting pissed off. The internet goes out and my web browser crashes. Realize how dark it is outside. Start getting kind of creeped out. Look back at my computer, still trying to load shit. See and feel a bald man in a suit who has no face or at least no discernible facial features in peripheral vision. He is staring at me through the window. Frozen in fear, keep staring at blank computer screen too scared to move. Eventually slowly get up. Keep my eyes away from the window and go to walk out of the room. Tell my parents who are in the living room watching a movie, but leave out the part about him having no face. They are creeped out and think it's a pedophile or something, but eventually chalk it up to child imagination. Next one. Around 10 or 11 maybe, a few years later. Parents divorced, moved to a new state, and live with my mom alone. The way our little guest house thing was set up was a two-story little one-bedroom loft thing with a main living area and kitchenette making up most of the floor space. Below the living area was a garage and laundry room on the first floor. Mom has sleep paralysis one night, freaked out upon learning that was a thing in the way she described it. Very traumatic for her bought some kind of totem thing to keep evil spirits away. A few days later I woke up in the middle of the night because I needed to piss. The little bedroom I was in was connected to a bathroom by a small hallway that I could see from my bed. Feel faint purple eyes bore into me. Whatever those eyes were connected to was tall. Same fear response as seeing the man in the window, absolutely frozen. Eventually get too unnerved to continue looking into the eyes, even if it means moving. Start to get up and go tell my mom. I slowly go back to the door open to the living area where my mom is sleeping. Hear banging coming from the garage beneath us. Screw this. Wake my mom up. Turn the lights on and tell her what I saw. She is still shaken up on account of her sleep paralysis experience from a week ago and takes it seriously. Start hearing what sounds like an army trampling up and down the stairs leading to our door from the first floor and banging over and over. We both sit there holding each other with the lights on waiting for it to stop. It does eventually stop. Both stay up all night with the lights on, try to distract ourselves by watching TV and shit. Never discuss it between us again. I'm not sure what the hell happened, and I probably do not want to know. Having never discussed it again with my mom makes the memory really fuzzy and I'm sure there are details I'm forgetting. The experience was really terrifying because it was the first time I saw my mom genuinely entertain the idea of scary shit beyond our understanding being responsible for things going on instead of me being a kid and having an active imagination. Very strange and crushing to realize that who you look to for answers and protection can provide neither, and you both are just as vulnerable. Three that seem related but have no connection. Born at the start of the 80s, I used to play in the street outside all the time. It's late afternoon one time and I'm by myself. Imagination is good and I never minded playing by myself. Be in the street on my scooter or some such. Live on a long L-shaped street, right on the edge of the rounded corner. Look down to the far end of the street. See a car coming. No biggie, not a main street. Continue playing. The car is still coming. Sigh realizing I'll have to stop playing to get out of the way. Car looks like it's sped up. Can see it's an older brown station wagon. Driver floors it now, car speeding directly at me. Can see the driver is a bald, haggard-looking old man, laughing maniacally. Run out of the street as the car screeches through the turn and speeds off. A couple years later, in the grocery store with mom, standing around the meat department, Mom goes into the frozen section to get stuff. By myself, standing still next to our shopping cart and staring off into space or whatever. Store is not super busy, 
but still kind of crowded. A woman employee comes out of the back, pushing a tall cart. She looks a little run down. Skin is rough and dull. She's probably late middle age. Pushing the cart one way, she looks over and sees me. Her face lights up, and her mouth splits into a too wide grin. Turns and starts running towards me, as if to run me over with the tall cart. Everyone else seems to fade into blurry NPCs, and my surroundings get fuzzy. Frozen in fear, the woman charging me, laughing silently. Mom comes back and puts frozen stuff in our cart. Woman turns and pushes tall cart down another aisle. Never saw her before or again. Several years later, leave the bedroom to go downstairs, alone at home. Turn the corner and pass the parents' bedroom. Crib is set up at the foot of their bed for when my sister's baby is born in a few weeks. Passing by and starting down the stairs, see an older bald man in black standing over the crib looking into it. Get to the bottom and process what I saw. Too scared to immediately go back and look. Finally go back up and look, but, of course, no one is there. Was also almost kidnapped once by a dude with an 80s stash and a blonde permed woman in a purple Corvette. But that wasn't very weird for the times. Oh boy, do I have a story. So I was around 12 or 13 at the time, right? And my little brother of five years old came into my room in the middle of the night all like, I had a scary dream that someone was watching me from the corner in my room. So I said, okay, come here. So now we were up talking about some dumb think like Pokemon cards or Minecraft when my brother goes silent and quickly throws the covers over his head and drops down. When I asked him what was wrong, he whispered to me in the most terrified voice I've ever heard from a child, the man from my dream is still here. He then proceeded to point to the corner of my room that's kind of shadowy. Now I was just thinking that he thought the shadows were a monster, so I got up to show him nothing was there. I approached the corner and noticed the temperature of my room slowly dropping until it's almost freezing once I'm there in the corner. I'm in the middle of saying, see, there's nothing here when I was cut off by something shoving me hard on my back. Needless to say, I was terrified and hid under the covers with my little brother until the sun came up. I changed rooms a couple weeks later and still haven't stepped foot in that corner ever since. I hope that you enjoyed tonight's broadcast. If you enjoyed tonight's story, then please subscribe to the channel as more green texts will appear daily. A new broadcast will appear when the clock strikes midnight central time. Remember to check the Odyssey and Rumble pages for separate archives of previous broadcasts.